If you are looking to become a full stack Python developer, then understanding Django should be really high on your priority list. And mastering these five concepts will help to take you from being a beginner to an expert much quicker and help you stand out above the rest. Django is an open source, high level Python web framework and it's used to power thousands of web applications across the internet. One of the main advantages of using Django is that it comes with all these different components already built in ready for you to use. Things like an object relational mapper, URL routing, templating, forms, authentication, and what brings me on to my first point, which is the admin panel. From working in Django for over 10 years on hundreds of different web application projects, the admin panel by far is one of my favorite features about Django. And it sounds really simple, but being able to have a dashboard out of the box that you can perform all different types of create, read, update, and delete operations is really valuable. Not only that, but you can really easily create, add, and delete super users to have access to this admin dashboard as well. So not only is it something really useful for you to use for your own web applications, but it's something that really wows and impresses clients as well, if you can provide them with a comprehensive admin dashboard like this. Outside of just managing the data, the forms that you'll see start off to be quite basic, but you can customize and adjust these to become really, really powerful. As an example, you can use horizontal filters for many-to-many -many fields which gives you this really nice split view of what has currently been selected versus what you can possibly add into the many-to-many -many field. And one of the problems that I actually came across with this is if this many-to-many -many field relates to a foreign key that has lots and lots of values, then actually the load times for these pages can be extremely long. And therefore what you can do is migrate away from one of these horizontal filter values and over to a search field, which actually preloads this field with 20 values, which you can then search from. And if the value that you're trying to search for isn't in the top 20, then it will just go to the database and fetch that specific value for you. So it's a great way to optimize the way that the admin panel actually works. And finally, if you've built web applications, you'll know that handling image files, storing those image files in an appropriate place, such as a CDN or S3, for example, can be a real pain. But luckily, Django has an answer for that. And you can actually use an image field, which you can then associate with an S3 bucket. What this will do is it will use a Python package called Pillow to process the image and then automatically save it in the static storage for you. And the great thing is that in the admin panel, it will give you this really nice form feature that allow you to just very simply upload an image and save it within the database. Tip number two, the user model and extending the user model. So once again, Django comes with a built-in user model. The reason why this is important is because if you're building web applications, then you're more than likely going to need some way of identifying users, storing information about those users, authenticating them, and so on and so forth. Some of this I'll touch on a little bit more later, but more specifically about the user model, the fact that it's already built into Django, it has a predefined schema, and out of the box manages things like encryption of passwords, storing of those passwords, unique identification of emails, just saves you so much time. Now, the great thing about this user model that comes out of the box is that it's really powerful, but it's very simple as well. And what you'll more than often find is that if you're building a web application, you might want to store more information about the user than what's currently available in the user model schema. So what you can then do is you can actually extend the user model and link it to another model, such as a profile model using a one-to-one -one relationship. And this allows you to store way more information about the user such as their current location, their preferences, a description or a bio, for example. And then by tying the two models together as a one-to-one -one field, it links them indefinitely, meaning that one user can only be matched to one profile. And then just relating this back to the admin panel, what you can do is you can actually unify the user experience in the admin panel so that you don't have to keep switching between the user model and the profile model. So you can actually have the profile appear in line for the user model, which is really great. Now moving on to number three, which is the Django REST framework. Out of the box, Django gives you all types of capabilities to create views for your application, which can serve HTML or responses back to the client. But if you're building a modern web application, then you're more than likely going to want to build some kind of API style views. And if that is the case, then you're more than likely going to want to create some REST APIs. So that's where the Django REST framework comes in. It works really well with the underlying Django framework. And once again, it comes with a whole bunch of out of the box features. One of these is the serializers. So what this allows you to do is not only to store information coming from an API request in a unified and a serialized method, 
but it allows you to retrieve information from the database and serialize it in the way that you need to actually prepare it and format it for the front end. So it helps to keep the requests and the responses really, really uniform and uncoupled. So you can create a completely custom serializer to process and then format data however you wish, or you can actually pair these serializers to a specific model. So then you're utilizing the underlying model to actually do all the legwork for you in terms of the different fields and the way that the fields need to be formatted. So serializers are really focused on working with data, not only from requests, but also with responses. But then if you're looking at the Django REST framework, you're more than likely going to make use of the API views. So you can initialize an API view either by using the handler or by using the API view class. And this keeps your APIs uniform and gives them a whole bunch of functionality and access to data. What you can then do to go one step further is you can pair this API view class with a class-based view. This just adds even more modularity and even more reproducibility into your code. Because what you're able to do with the class-based views is you're able to house all of your different HTTP methods and any helper methods that you might want to include all within one single class. So you can have get, post, put, patch, and delete all within the same class. And what you may find as you start to develop these class-based views is that you may start to actually repeat a lot of the similar kind of boilerplate code that you use for all of these different methods. But then once again, Django REST framework comes with classes that can help you to actually eliminate a lot of that work. And these are called mix-ins. So for the typical create, get, update, and delete operations, you can actually replace a lot of the logic that you may have been producing for your different HTTP methods with a simple mix-in class. And this is gonna save you even more time and reduce the amount of code that you need to write. And the final point around the Django REST framework is that it allows you to manage very complicated concepts such as rate limiting and throttling through some very simple configuration in your settings file. So there's various different ways that you can set these policies. You can do it application-wide or you can map specific API endpoints to specific throttle rates. And it manages the throttling of APIs using a built-in cache that the Django REST framework has. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to manage the throughput of API requests into your system from the clients. And it's really important for things like securing your APIs and making sure that a level of service is always delivered. Now on to the fourth point, which is authentication. Now this is very closely related to the user model that I described earlier. If you have users within your application, then you're going to need a way to authenticate and authorize those users, perhaps to access different parts of your application or to use different APIs, for example. So Django out of the box comes with an authentication system and framework. There's a whole host of helper functions that you can simply just import into your Python files to do things like authenticating, logging out, and managing sessions. So by default, the authentication middleware that is used within Django is a session-based middleware. And you can customize this and extend this how you wish. But now building on the API framework that I mentioned before, Django REST framework, one way that you can enhance these APIs is by securing these APIs with specific permissions. And these include permissions such as, is the user authenticated? Are they a staff member? Do you want to allow anybody to use this API? Or you can actually create your own custom permissions based on user information. So for example, let's say that you wanted to secure an API to a specific region and you had the locale of the users stored within the profile model, then you could create a custom permission and secure your API with that permission. So that if the authenticated user was not from that locale, then they wouldn't be able to access that API. Now if session-based authentication worked for you, then that's great. But one thing that I typically use for more complex web applications is JSON web tokens. And building this from scratch would be a real pain. So luckily, once again, there's another package that you can use called Django Simple JWT, which integrates really nicely with the Django framework and gives you all of the things that you'll possibly need for a JSON web token authentication system. It generates access tokens, it manages refresh tokens, and it even manages the blacklisting of tokens after they've expired. Not only that, but all of this information about the tokens can also be seen in the admin dashboard as well. My last and final point, point number five, is localization, internationalization, and time zone support. So if you're building a web application that is only gonna be served in a specific country, such as England, for example, then when data is saved in the database and timestamps are created alongside that, there are settings in Django that will allow you to deactivate any kind of internationalization or time zone support for those timestamps. So they'll be naive timestamps. However, if you're working with users and clients in different countries and different time zones, the server that you're running works on a single time zone. 
and Django by default uses the UTC time zone. This can be configured in the settings file. But what this means is that if a user creates some data outside of the UTC time zone, then the timestamp that that data gets saved against is the equivalent timestamp in UTC time. It's not the timestamp of the user in their time zone specific time. So Django might save the data at let's say 5 p.m. But actually in their local time, it might have been 9 p.m. at night. So if you have a web application that services people across the world and across time zones, building in time zone support is a really important thing. And to do that manually would take forever. So once again, Django comes to the rescue and Django has this out of the box. It allows you to save timestamps in a time zone sensitive format, which means that as incoming data is being processed, you can handle that timestamp and you can save a timestamp with a particular time zone associated with it. So that when you process this timestamp to the user in an API response, for example, you can quickly identify that this timestamp actually is plus four hours compared to the UTC uh, base server time. And therefore you can convert that timestamp to show the appropriate local time for the user. Alongside being able to show and handle local times for users across the world, languages is also a really important thing. So let's say you have some static content that you want to serve to your users. It might be a snippet of text, it might be a HTML snippet, it might be an API response, but there might be some parts of that response that you need to localize based on the location of the user. For example, some text. You don't necessarily want to show an English piece of text to everybody around the world. You might want to put it in their local language. So out of the box, Django has features that allow you to manage translations of different static information so that when the user's location is known in an API response, you can use the helper methods to very quickly ensure that the right text in the right language is being shown to the user. And this just helps to improve the user experience for people all over the world. Otherwise, you'll end up having to build some kind of really manual mapping process in the back end, which really isn't what you want to do at all. So those are my five top tips for Django. From working with Django for over 10 years, I can guarantee you that by using these tips and by making use of these different features, it's gonna supercharge your Python ability and make you a Django expert much, much quicker. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and would like to learn more about what you can do in Python, why not check out some more of my videos? Would love to see you back here again soon.